Now, good evening, Dr. Dewitt's Brain Builders Masterclass. Hope you're all doing well. This is uh, Nick from Cambridge Brain Sciences. I just want to walk you guys through the CBS Health platform to give you guys some background as to how the tool was built and how we're uh, managing and measuring and quantifying uh, cognition and cognitive health and, and ways in which we can, of course, uh, improve our cognition. Uh, so I'll jump right into it if that's okay, guys. So uh, CBS, Cambridge Brain Sciences, we are actually a research organization. We have two platforms, CBS Health and CBS Research. Uh, I won't delve into CBS Research too much, but in the early part of our organization, we were primarily partnering with academia. Now, they were using our tool, of course, to find those underlying neural pathways in executive functioning and cognition. And that, of course, is a, a primal part of the platform itself. And then on the other side of the coin, of course, we do have pharmaceutical organizations who use the tool in efforts to, of course, get FDA approval in some of their clinical trials for some of their prospective drugs. Uh, so this tool has been highly vetted by the scientific community. It's, it's being completed globally and, of course, is backed by a tremendous amount of research. Now, a lot of those research efforts were actually spearheaded by Dr. Adrian O, and he's our chief scientific officer. He's actually born and raised in in the United Kingdom, and that's where, of course, he did his PhD at the University of Cambridge. So we stole our name from there, of course. However, in early 2000s, I want to say, Canadian government offered him a huge grant, recognized him as a thought leader in the space, and, and, and approached him to conduct his studies on Canadian soil. And that's what led to, of course, the Western University affiliation. Now, through some of those efforts, he, of course, got a tremendous amount of publications under his belt. And I'm sure you guys can appreciate the difficulty in getting into some of these journals. Uh, and really and truly, I would attribute it to one thing, and I think that's his ability to break down complex concepts in the neuroscience world into to layman's terms. So when you speak with Dr. Owen, really and truly, it doesn't seem like you're speaking with uh, a leading figure in the space as he tries to find a familiar language to speak about cognition and mental health in an objective manner. And really and truly, that's what we're trying to do with the platform. We're trying to enable and empower practitioners to be able to uh, confidently speak about cognition, mental health, and executive functioning um, in a manner and a language that's familiar to both the practitioner and patient alike, uh, while still being grounded heavily in science and data. Now, uh, our tasks themselves, I'm sure you guys have played through some of them now, our tasks actually all stem from a classic psychometric variant. So Dr. Owen didn't necessarily change the face of neuroscience, rather he refreshed it, made it a little bit more modern. Now, of course, at the time it was uh, his for scaling, so as opposed to having 10 to 30 people coming into his lab to complete a coursey block tapping task, of course, we can get a much larger sample size and more statistical significance in our studies, of course, um, to do so. And really and truly, that kind of alludes to the power of the platform as it stands today. Uh, now, as I'm, I'm, as I'm sure you guys are aware, we look at four domains in cognition anytime we, we look. Memory, reasoning, verbal ability, and concentration. Any sort of impairment or hindrance in executive functioning or cognitive ability will, of course, uh, be captured by one of these domains. Within each bucket, we have our 12 associated executive functions and outcome measures. Then, of course, each one of our correlated tasks. Now, Dr. Owen actually had his participants go through an fMRI as they conducted each one of these tasks, and that's essentially how we identified those underlying neural pathways and cognition. And it's quite granular in regards to the brain regions, and I'll say that's really and truly how our neurologists are using the tool. They're able to put patients through one of, this, one, one of these CBS health batteries, kind of put objective data behind what they may subjectively be seeing, and from there they can actually see where in the brain may be impacted for that patient. So if they're dealing with a concussion patient, they can see exactly where the lesions are and then, of course, make the appropriate treatments um, for that area. And, of course, you will, by, from that, be able to quantify and see how that patient's progressing over time. Now, as I mentioned, those practitioners, it's a mobile and desktop-enabled platform. And since it's web-based, uh, there's no real hardware nor software required, which is a big feat in the, in the cognitive or digital platform space. And essentially, they configure these batteries based on the condition or disorder a patient comes in with. And it automatically generates or quantifies for them what's going on in that patient's brain. And, and, and they do that by essentially looking at this test selection guide. This grid is a list of common disorders or conditions that our partner clinicians are using the tool for. Um, I think it high ca showcases sorry, the, the flexibility of the platform really and truly. So anywhere from autism, early Alzheimer's, epilepsy, Parkinson's, 
concussion, depression. I mean, I think this depression anxiety bucket's a huge untapped one that will only expand uh, in the coming years. Uh, but nevertheless, four cognitive domains we always work under, 12 associated executive functions, and of course, the 12 associated tasks. Each check mark is actually a study that was published, or a paper that was published, rather, that makes that connection between the appropriate disorder and then, of course, that executive function on the top. So rest assured, if you have somebody that, um, for example, just recently had a concussion from a sports injury, you'd administer this battery, be an eight test battery. And that will, of course, quantify for you what's going on in the patient's brain with regards to the brain regions that may be implicated or are implicated, sorry, with a concussion. Now, the tasks, as I'm sure you guys saw already, all done between 90 seconds to three minutes. Our normative database, so how you get that bell curve and, and that comparison group is about 75,000 individuals and it's a healthy population. So it gives you a benchmark once you throw, go through a baseline test. You can see where or how far you may be impacted compared to the norm. And now this test retest reliability is a very important point. Anytime you look into any sort of digital platform really and truly, uh, you want to ensure that the retest reliability is robust. Uh, as if there is a change in cognition, you want it to be attributable to one of two things. Either the, the intervention is working, so whatever therapy you're providing, whether that be a nootropic or rather just general rehab, um, that's impacting your cognition or rather something significant happened in that patient's life, whether that be a concussion, an auto vehicle industry or auto vehicle accident or um, of course, just general stress at work, those are all impacted or implicated with your cognition. Now, if there is, say, quote unquote, a change in cognition, you don't want it to be attributable to the tool itself. So we take that very seriously. And essentially, we have an algorithm behind each one of our tasks that actually ensures every time somebody goes through one of these tasks, it's a mutually exclusive event. There's actually no way for you to game nor trick the system into performing better or worse than you can actually handle. And that's, of course, to ensure that it is an objective metric um, and an, a, an accurate reflection of what's going on in your brain. Now, these are the reports that are automatically generated, as I'm sure you guys got a chance to review them. But there's a few ways they're used in practice, right? We have our primary care physicians that are able to use this in a manner the same way you get your annual physical and your blood pressure check done. This would be the cognitive component, right? This would be a way to track year on year how you're performing, not necessarily intervening, but rather you're able to see those early indicators of cognitive decline, see where you may um, be at risk if you have a familial history of Alzheimer's or dementia, for example. And then more so where, where Dr. Dewitt's kind of coming into this is he has his various treatment plans and, and remedies that can impact cognition. So if you're testing pre and post, you can almost hack the brain in a way and, and optimize your cognition in that regards. And at the end of the day, really and truly, this is a motivating tool, right? Um, it puts numbers and objective data behind what you may be subjectively feeling. And it helps you keep going, keep motivated and keep going along with whatever uh, therapy or intervention you are uh, proceeding with. Now, some quick highlights that I think help differentiate CBS from other platforms is, of course, our batteries are quick and convenient. So on average, they're about 15 to 20 minutes or so. A full psychometric battery sometimes can take up to an hour, and a half, hour, hour and a half. And you can imagine if you're a post-concussion patient, for example, the last thing you want to do is sit through an assessment with a screen for an hour and a half. So we try to be um, cognizant of that, you could say. And then, of course, the nature of the platform, as you guys saw, it, it doesn't really seem like you're testing for cognition, right? It seems much more like that of a child's iPad game, which makes it really and truly accessible for all. So it's unintimidating, uh, it's friendly, and it's sticky for everybody, right? It's, again, um, not a chore or hassle to go through. Now, from a practitioner's perspective, this may not be as uh, relevant for you guys, but it's very important in, in the space is you're both able to administer it in person or remotely. Um, of course, there's a lot of telemedicine practices out there. And, and the biggest thing I would recommend or I, I let them know is, of course, you want to set the precedent as to why you're looking into cognition for the patient. Um, and more importantly, standardizing that environment. As these tests are highly sensitive, um, you want to ensure that all factors considered are consistent each time you retest. You got enough sleep. You're not overly stressed at work. Your diet and nutrition hasn't drastically changed 
and, and really and truly you're in a comfortable environment to do the test. You're not high stress, right? That's that's extremely important when you're going through some of these tasks to make sure it again it is a genuine reflection of what's going on in your brain. And then last but not least, of course, the obvious, the patient trends. The reporting is is second to none. And I think that's what helps differentiate ourselves as it's a quick snapshot into your brain health without without being inundated with too much information, right? So it's a friendly way to, to get an understanding of what you may subjectively be feeling. Now, I want to share another document with you guys here. This document is uh, something that our practitioners are using to essentially set the precedent as to why are we even looking into cognition and what is the importance of this. So it's actually a memo from our chief scientific officer uh, about keeping mentally fit, a guide to managing your brain health. And I think you guys would really like this guy. Um, it starts off from, a, again, a memo from Dr. Owen saying, well, the first way to look at cognition, it's, it's not a static number. It's not like your height nor your IQ. I mean, uh, that change or that is static. That won't change year on year. Rather, it's much more dynamic. So in a similar manner to your blood pressure, we use that analogy quite frequently, actually. Cognitive function is much more like blood pressure than it is height. I mean, if you test your blood pressure on an annual basis, all health factors considered, it should stay relatively the same. But if you're testing it on a daily basis, because there are so many different factors implicated with it, it should fluctuate drastically. And I mean, that's the exact same way to look at cognition. Uh, all factors considered, it should stay consistent unless you're testing it on a daily basis when everything that you do in your day-to-day -day living are impacting how your brain functions, what you've eaten, your mood, and other factors, right? So if you do want to manage your cognition and do you want to optimize your brain health and kind of hack your brain, the first step, of course, would be to measure it because how do you know what improvements or, or um, deficits you're making if you don't know where you're coming from? So, of course, you want to have that baseline to, to understand where you lie. And then beyond that, there's two ways to go about doing it, of course. You can longitudinally track it, where you're just kind of tracking data points and seeing how you evolve over time, not necessarily intervening in any way. See if there's an early indicator of cognitive decline, for example, especially if you have a familial history of Alzheimer's or dementia. And then on the other side of the coin, of course, Dr. Dewitt's side of things is before and after treatment. So uh, you have your various treatment protocols to optimize your brain health, and if you measure before and after, you can kind of quantify and see how far you've come, see what those changes in your lifestyle have impacted, uh, not only your physical well-being, but also your mental. And then we jump into uh, essentially outside of those therapeutic interventions that you can have, what you can personally do to enhance and improve your cognition from your own standpoint. And really and truly it goes down to the basics, the fundamentals that we always speak about. Your sleep, your exercise, your diet, and your stress are all scientifically um, linked to your cognitive performance, right? And then we kind of delve into each one of those bullet points. Your sleep is, is extremely huge, extremely, extremely important when it comes to your cognition. We actually did the world's largest sleep study based out of, uh, I believe it was a partnership with the University of Sydney as well as Western University with about 40,000 participants. And it came out that, of course, cognition, your cognitive performance is optimal at 7.6 hours on average, right? And don't get me wrong, that's not a, a hard fact. If the older you get, you will sleep less. But there are some other hygiene factors you do need to consider, right? Did you eat or drink before you sleep? You're setting consistent sleep and waking times and uh, adhering to that schedule. And, of course, you're exercising during the day, which jumps into or segues into my next point, right? Exercise matters. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, aerobic exercise and, and different ways that you can actually impact not only your, your course your heart, but more importantly, your, your brain as well, right? And then really, this is the bread and butter, your diet and nutrition, what you're putting in your body is and what you're fueling your brain with will, of course, impact how well it's performing. Um, so if you're if you're feeding it with garbage, I mean, garbage in, garbage out, right? So be aware of what you're putting in your body, be aware of how it's not only impacting your, your physiological well being, but also your cognitive and mental. And then last but not least, of course, Stress and anxiety, while some stress is important, I mean, we live in a time where, where chronic stress is kind of ever prevalent, and that's not necessarily um, the most optimal. So, of course, there's that inverted use stress or shaped stress curve, which shows, of course, some stress is good, but at some point it will taper off. So you need to be aware of that. And then we give some strategies for how to go about doing that, of course, in 
in a work-life balance, right? And then most importantly, you got to be aware of those quick fixes. Um, cognition and the same way your, your physical well-being can't be fixed overnight, well, nor can your brain. It takes quite a bit of effort and it takes uh, working with healthcare pro- professionals such as Dr. Do It um, and others to really optimize your well-being. And, and I hope that you guys take this to heart. You really, um, and by all means, of course, we can vet the re- references and papers behind this um, this memo. But I do hope you guys take this to heart. Um, by the way, we are based out of Toronto, just north of the border. Um, so take that to heart. I really hope uh, what you're doing with Dr. Do It makes a meaningful impact in your life in regards to not only your, your physical well-being again, but your mental. Track it, see how you're performing, see how you're evolving over time. And you'll be shocked at the results and it'll be a, a nice little bragging right uh, at the dinner table, I guess, to, to show how you've evolved. Um, so again, thank you guys for your attention and I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys perform and how you guys evolve over these next few weeks with Dr. Do It and the Brain Builders class. So all the best. And if at any point you have any questions about Cambridge Brain Sciences, uh, feel free to get my contact information from Dr. Dude. I'd be more than happy to continue this conversation um, in any way you see fit. But thank you guys for your attention again and all the best. Take care now. Bye-bye.